Hello guys, my name is Lotus the Game. Welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel 3. In the last video, we completed the Does uh, Does It Belong in a Museum quest, and in that quest. And uh, for those who didn't watch it, well, I'll let you. I'll I'll pretty much let you uh, figure it out by watching the video. Anyway, in this video we're going to be going to the West Austria Highway to take down a quest monster. So here we go. The, the west gate of Heimdall. There sure is a lot of foot traffic here. Yeah, and there's even a bus stop. If we follow the road, we get we'll get to leaves, right? Yeah, but if we walked, it'll it'd take hours. I believe the wanted monster lurks somewhere on the far on the far off side road. It's a type of dragon. It's going to be formidable. It's going to be formidable. <laughs> Bring it on. All we have to do is apply is apply what we've learned in the keep. Yeah, that yeah, that's right. <laughs> Every now and then, you know the right thing to say. I'll keep. I can't let them beat me to the punch. All right, let's get ready and hand over and head over. Let's get going. Go, go. Huh? Oh. Let's get going. Go, go. The Corel Imperial Villa. Yeah, we all need to go there. Looks like we hit the jackpot. Uh-huh. Sure. Do be careful. That enemy's strong. Mm-hmm. You, you too. Well, let's get going. Go, go. Bruh, shut up. All right, I guess we just keep going then. That enemy is strong. Please be careful. There's a little path to the side. I believe that wanted monster is just beyond there. We're ready to take it on, right? Let's go. Okay, I, I, I believe that's that all of them. Enemy strong. Please be careful. Yeah, I believe that's all the. Mo I believe that's all the chests. All right, here we are. No. <laughs> What the? Was that a man's voice? I don't think it was uh, an auditory uh, hallucination. His voice. Everyone, I'll lead the way. Huh, what are you, an idiot? <sighs> the quicker decision is made, the better it is. Uh, don't, don't tell me it is who, don't tell me who's I, uh, who I think it is. Don't tell me it is who I, don't tell me it's who I think if it I'm is. If I'm going to be eaten, I'd rather it not be in a place like this. Yeah. Oh, I already got that. A double-headed dragon. It's the wanted monster. <sighs> Are you here to save me? It's like the goddess herself has come to pluck me out of Gehenna. Please, do away with this vile creature! Hmm. 
Um, he looks like he's doing just fine. <laughs> All right, class seven, subdue the target. Yeah. Let me get. Let me eat you for lunch, pal. Let's go. And Reen and Ash are burnt. Sure. I shall go. Now. An opening. It's my turn. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yes. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. It's down. Everyone, go. It's my turn. Yeah. Now. There. Now. An opening. Not on my watch. I'll care for you. Thanks. It's my turn. Sit. Yes. Sure. Huh. Now, let's dance. My turn. There. There. An opening. It's my turn. Huh. Now. Let's go, Altina! It's my turn. Sit! All right. Nice work. That's it. <sighs> Not too shabby. <laughs> All our training in the keep is paying dividends. <gasps> you saved me. We're just glad you're okay. You're not injured, are you? Oh, no, not at all. Thanks to your prompt response to my high-pitched wails for assistance. So, what are you doing here, Instructor Thomas? Oh, -ho! is that Reen I spy? One of my eager young pupils. It has been an age, hasn't it? I heard through the grapevine that you started work at Thor's branch campus. Huh? Did you say instructor? So does that mean instructor Reen knows him from... <laughs> Precisely! Uh, what was that about? Ex-instructor Thomas Lysander. It is a pleasure to meet you, young members of the new Class 7. I am the former history instructor of Thor's main campus, Thomas Lysander. Currently, I'm stretching my wings a little and doing some work as a freelance historian. <laughs> He's like, oh boy, this again. <laughs> I see. So after leaving the main campus, uh, you went off and did some traveling. Yes, I toured historic sites, but after four months, I was broke. I was reluctantly making my way back to the capital on foot. You're so different from Professor Lumen. Well, he is a teacher at the Imperial Academy after all. But if you were a history instructor, does that mean you tell Instructor Reen everything he knows about Erebonian history? <laughs> well, I guess you could say that. I, uh, I'd say it was because of the black records, so... Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. I couldn't be more proud as an instructor. In more recent news, we've defeated the most, uh, we've defeated the wanted monster. Would you like to return the, uh, would you like to return to Heimdall with us? <laughs> You're all just as kind as Reen. I, uh, let's go to Heimdall then. <laughs> Oh, and feel free to use your orbital bikes, by the way. What exactly are you planning? <laughs> nothing, nothing. This is all just a coincidence. He's so full of it. Second among the Dominion, in fact. 
I stand at the right hand of our leader, and am known by some as the Partitioner. But you already know my real name, of course. I've never hidden that from you. I am, and shall always be, Thomas Lysander. That was, yeah, that was an exclusive scene um, uh, to the new game plus of Trails of Cold Steel 2. Uh, Razine's boss, a true believer of the mystery behind the Black Records. There must be a reason why he remained hidden till now. I gotta find that la- alright. Let's get going. Go, go. I gotta somehow find that last monster. If you continue north, you'll end up at the Corel Imperial Villa. The Corel Imper the Corel Imperial Villa? What's that? It's a palace that the Imperial family uses for events. I see, so it's connected. It's open to the Repu it's open to the public this time of year. Yeah, there's a special train at Heimdall Station that you can that you could take to get there. All right, then why don't we go uh, go have ourselves a look and then take the train back? W well, I am a little interested, but we're in the middle of our special ops missions. Unfortunately, we must decline. <laughs> Maybe next time, then. All right, so up ahead, there's a little optional event. It is a photo shot. Is a photo a uh, photo spot. There. Let's get going. Go, go. Phew, we're here. Ah, I'm truly grateful to you all. Oh, excuse me. This is Schwarzer. Uh, Ring, is now a good time? Since the call went through, I'm guessing you're still in the city somewhere, right? Yes, we had some business to take care of on the highway, and we just came back. So what's up? Well, I just wrapped up a call, actually. I called home and was asked to come over for lunch. I told them about you and they and they said I should invite you. That's... wouldn't that be a hassle? No, auntie and uncle like having guests over. Uh, of course, only if you have the time with your special ops missions. So how about it? Understood. I'll head to your house right now. Um, so where is it? <laughs> It's in the district you guys were uh, were at in the morning. It's in it's the Herschel's gr uh, general store on Vesta Street. Oh, so that's the place. Uh, so that place is your home after all. Got it. We're heading over right now. Okay, I'll be right. Okay, I'll be waiting. <laughs> was that to was that instructor Toa? Are we heading? Uh, are we headed somewhere? Yeah, actually, Doreen explained how they were invited over for lunch. I see. I get it now. Hmm. I haven't seen Toa since she graduated. I wonder. I wonder if it'll be all right if I came too. Sure. If you. If they. Sure. If they appreciate weirdos. Or history nerds. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be. I'm sure it'd make her happy. I'll contact her right now that you... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually have to meet up with someone right now. 
someone who's quite stubborn and difficult to deal with. I'm sure they're in. I'm sure they're. In, I'm sure they're in the capital somewhere, but our schedules just don't line up. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> oh, that's the tram that heads to the main street. Now, Phil, excuse me. Good luck with your field exercises. Yeah. Uh, yes. Goodbye. Thank you for all your heart. Uh, thank you for y all your help. Here's a copy of the books. I was holding on. I was holding them for you. They're for. Uh, they're from Sister Rosine. Received copy of Black Records Four and Black Records Five. Thank you so much. I'll update you on the newest books eventually too. The new class seven looks like a nice group of kids. <laughs> He's so carefree. <laughs> How did someone like uh, like that even get a job at the academy? <laughs> He may not look like it, but he's quite strong. Uh, he want, he wants fight a ma he wants fought a magic knight with only an orval staff. What? Oh? His appearance says otherwise. No, he may look easy going, but his movements are, were extremely um uh, metho uh method uh methodical. Uh, but his movements were extremely methodical. <laughs> you can't judge a you can't judge a person by their so, uh, solely by their looks. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, pretty much falls under the pretty much falls under the uh, falls under the don't judge a book by its cover uh, category. Well, now. It's almost noon, so let's head to Vester Street. It would be rude if we showed up late. I completely agree. I suppose we should wait for the tram then. Anyway, let's, uh. Why wait for the tram when we could just quick travel? With that, Reen and the students were treated to lunch on the second floor of the store of the store Toa's family owned. Sorry for showing up in a big crowd like this. Oh, nonsense! We've been dying to meet you! We always knew she went to the same school as the Ashen Chevalier. But when we found out you two were co-workers now, we knew we had to invite you over. Hey, Auntie! <sighs> don't get cocky, Reen Schwarzer! You may be famous, but don't think for a second I'll let some dumb celeb like you get with Toa! Hey, Kai, you're being very rude right now. <laughs> I grew up at a lively ta a dinner table. I grew up at le I grew up at di lively dinner tables like this, so I feel right at home. Yes, it's been some time since I've sat down uh, to such an animated meal. Oh, sorry, Kurt. You were waiting for your mom, weren't you? No, I told her I'd be heading home one once we were done with our field exercises. Oh. <laughs> hey, can I get seconds over here? Of course, dear. I made plenty. Uh, I made plenty, so go right ahead and stuff yourselves. I hope you girls aren't holding back because you're worried about gaining weight or anything like that. No. If anything, I'd like to gain weight, actually. Altina, dear. Oh, words like that are apt to make oh women the world over your enemies. She didn't say it was gonna be a lot of weight. She probably means like a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bunch of good kids. Uh, from the sound of it, the class uh, the class she's in charge of is, is full of a bunch of characters, too. Yeah, but they're all hard workers, every one of them. Toa, mo uh, Toa most of all, though. She's helped me more, more times than I can count. 
<laughs> She's pretty much always been like that. Her parents and her grandfather prob probably played a big part in that. I see. She might, be, she might have told you, but both her parents were scholars. But they passed away when she was young, so she was raised by her grandfather. He was a scholar too. Pretty, pop, pretty important in the scholarly world, actually. He used to be a director of the Imperial Museum you guys visited the, this morning. Alright, oh, I heard about that. He was a famous astronomer. Yes, but he too passed away a few, day, a few years ago. He was already very intelligent. She was already very intelligent, but after that, she began uh, studying even harder. To the point where she started to go uh, to get top grades out of all the schools in Heimdall. I thought she'd be going to the Imperial Academy, but she took a scholarship to go to the to a military school instead. At first, I assumed she did because she didn't want us to worry about take, about paying her tuition, but it seems she had a different reason. Huh. Come to think of it, I've never asked her why she chose to enroll at Thor's. I was worried about her since she, uh, since she has a habit of pushing herself too much. So, as far as I'm concerned, as far as we're concerned, she's our adorable niece and, uh, and an irreplaceable part of our family. <laughs> well, I'll try to I'll try to help her out as much as I can at work. How about that? Well, why do that? There's a bunch. There's a much simpler way for a man to support a woman, huh? She's a bit. Uh, she's a bit petite and childlike, but she's oh no. But she's adorable and great with housework. You two work in the same place, so why not just take her as your wife and let her quit? Now, now, Martha. These days, it's perfectly normal for a husband and wife to work in the same place. Sure, maybe until they have kids. Oh, but we could help uh, help you take uh, help you to take care of your little ones if you needed it. <laughs> Aunt Martha, I'm, Aunt Martha, instru um, <laughs> instructor, uh, Uncle Fred, stop! <laughs> Embarrassing her. After lunch was finished, coffee was served. Wait, isn't coffee uh, more suitable for the mornings? The delicious aroma of roasted beans wa uh, wafted throughout the uh, waft. Wait, is it waft or waft? Uh, whatever. Through the uh, through the house, Toe invited Reen to her room to discuss something. Oh, so this is your room, uh, huh? Don't look too closely. It's not very girly, is it? I was thinking about eventually giving this room to Kai. But they all said it was too early to move all my things out. <laughs> her family must really cherish her. There are so many books here. Did you buy all oh, these? Oh, no. Most of them were my parents. They studied politics and economics, so a big chunk of the books are on those two topics. The oh, room wow. next door was my grandpa's office. There are a ton of books in there, and not just about astronomy. Jeez, this place must be a. This place might as well be a library. Come to think of it, I've spent most of my life surrounded by books. So you pretty much be. Uh, so you might as well just live in a library instead. <laughs> I could picture that. She might as well be a walking book. <laughs> I've been wondering, what made you decide to go to a military school? Huh? I mean, Thor's is a prestigious place and all, but and, gra and graduates don't always join the military, but 
With your with your grades and how smart you are, you uh, you could have gone to any number of the uh, of other prestigious schools. Why Thor's? Well, the scholarships were good uh, were good at Thor's, but besides that, I figured that military matters were unavoidable here in Thor here in Arabonia. Hmm. Mm. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's just natural. Maybe it's just nat uh, nationalism, uh, or our country's traditions. But martial but martial issues have always been highly uh, have always been valued highly here. Uh, there's the history of power struggles and rising arsenals between the imperial army and the provincial and the provincial armies. Then there's our hundred, uh, hundreds of years of conflict with Calvert. That's probably the biggest factor in our in our in our country being so wary. Personally, I don't like war, but I believe in this day and age there won't be a, there won't be any avoiding it. Grandpa told Grandpa told me that if you want to find the truth, you have to look for it in both the good and the bad. I think that might be why I chose Thor's. At the core of things like the military or martial arts is power, no violence. Sorry, I probably shouldn't be saying things like this to someone who practices swordsmanship like you. Don't worry, I won't say any of this to students. No, it's okay, I understand that feeling. But wow, fearing violence yet trying to find answers by immersing yourself in it. That's not something you can do unless unless the right amount of knowledge or without the right amount of knowledge or determination. I'm impressed. I almost I almost want to start calling you Pre uh, President Toa again. Hey. Oh, I almost forgot. Look over here, Toa. Look over here, Reen. I almost said look over. I almost said Toa. <laughs> I want said Toa. Oh, that picture there. Is that you when you're younger? Oh no, that wasn't it. <laughs> Sorry for prying. I'd honestly like to get a closer look at the at these though. Well, if you really want to, you can, but these are your parents. Uh, these are your parents. Yeah, shortly after we took the. Shortly after we took this photo, they got in an accident while traveling abroad. They were on their way back from an international academic conference in Crossbell when their airship crashed. Oh, I see. I remember. I think I remember hearing that. And oh, and this must be your grandpa. I've heard so much about. Yeah, I was Grandpa's little girl, so I was always with him. He, uh, we went to museums together. Sometimes he'd sneak me into lectures. Well, that's quite the child. Sh uh, that's quite the childhood. Oh, uh, this picture from the school festival. I've got the same one on my desk too. Uh, come to think of it, this is the only picture we took with when we took with all of us together like this. Yeah, you're right. I have the one from graduation too, but I like this one better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, uh, don't look at that one. <laughs> That's from that concert footage from uh, from your first year you sh from your first year you showed me, isn't it? It really is quite a bold costume. Reen. Sorry. Huh? Is this from your first year at the academy? Yes, I I guess I've never shown it to you. We took this picture back. We took this picture back when the four of us were testing the Arcus. Angie and George uh, were uh, knew each other from their time at Ruhr. Crow and Angie were always fighting back then. But all his jokes and his laid-back attitude were just uh, were just to cover up his two goals. Yeah, maybe Angie noticed that about him from the start. 
but instructed Sarah taught us and we'd uh, help each other out when we were in a pinch. The four of us were each in different classes, but we became best friends regardless. Toa. <laughs> That's why I understand why you feel the way you do about class seven. Here, yeah, this is why I wanted to here yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. It's a gift from me. This is a picture book. Well, more like a photo album. After graduation, I asked Fidelio from the photography club to make a little album of Class Seven. He got and he gathered up all the photo, all the pictures taken by Rex, the other the other students, and the instructors. I thought this would be the perfect thing for when Class Seven got together again. Toa. Thank you, really, for everything. <laughs> you guys worked so hard to oh, for over a year. This is the least I could do for you. Uh, me, Angie, George, all the stu all the other students and the instructors, even Crow. We li we all liked seeing Class Seven happy and smiling again. <laughs> I'll make sure they all see this as early as tonight, actually. Provided I can get a hold of all of them, that is. I see. Well, I hope everything works out. Me too. Though I'll prioritize our field exercises, of course. You hear that, everyone? We're going to be starting our afternoon mission soon, so get yourselves in gear. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> Don't underestimate him. <laughs> oh, man. I knew I should have switched to stop mode. Yeah, he should have. Hey, what's this present sensing crap of his? Maybe he's just good at sniffing people out? No, it's his se no, it's his high level sensing skill. <laughs> if that's the case, maybe he'd be vulnerable to a little pheromone enhanced perfume. Just open the door already. Our apologies. We were coming to get you and heard your voice. Yeah, we figured we shouldn't interrupt. Oh, yeah? Well, I figured you two were getting hot and heavy in there. Hot and he Ash! Cut it out, you! <laughs> <laughs> in any event, you plan to meet the others from the old Class 7 tonight, correct? Well, we're stuck writing all our reports for the day. Hey, you. Hey, Altina, you can come too if you want. Well, no. Nothing's set in stone just yet, you know? You'll back me up here, right, Kurt? Sorry, that's simply not possible. Yeah. What about you, at? What about you, Altina? Sorry, I'm gonna have to pass. Screw you, Altina! Oh! <laughs> After the commotion had settled down, Reed and the others said their goodbyes and left the Herschel store. They saw Toa back to the field exercise camp and then set off to resume their special operations missions. <laughs> Moral. Uh. Okay, it's the afternoon. Danger under hoof. Heimdall tra rock chase. It's a dangerous area beneath the race course that would uh, that would. That we would like investigated. We hope to tr. We hope. Oh, uh, we hate to tr. We hate to trouble you, but we might. But might we ask for your help? The manager Charlton will. Uh, will ask you. Uh, will give you the details. Please get. Please come to the Heimdall race course at your earliest convenience. And now for the side mission, riding the orbital waves. J uh, Johannes. Or is it Johannes? Uh, no, probably Johannes. We are had. Oh, we are having issue. We are having repeated issues with our communication devices, and we're hoping someone could help us investigate the cause. Please come to the Lumiere uh, Orbital Factory and see Johannes. Uh, 
Uh, Johannes for more details. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.